Welcome to video four in the series titled Receiving HF Digital Signals, FLAMP Setup for Amron Ops. In this video, we'll walk you through setting up FLAMP, the Fast Light Companion Program, which works with FL Digi and FL Message. If you haven't done so already, be sure to go back and watch the first three videos in this series, Receiving HF Digital Signals. Even if you're not a ham operator, FL Digi setup for Amron operations and FL Message setup for Amron operations. Each video provides a building block intended to build upon the other. So by now you should have FLAMP downloaded and installed. And like the last video, we'll include a test message at the end for you to practice to be sure everything's working properly. So let's address what FLAMP is exactly and why we use it. FLAMP, or F-L-A-M-P, is a program for AMP, the Fastlight Amateur Multicast Protocol. From the FLAMP manual, which can be downloaded as a PDF on the W1HKJ download webpage, an FLAMP session will transmit one or more files with one or more iterations of the transmission. Each file is broken into blocks, each of which has a checksum. The receiving station saves the blocks that pass checksum. Successive transmissions will fill in the missing blocks provided that the new blocks pass the checksum. After the transmission sequence, the entire file is assembled and may be saved. Fills may be provided by retransmitting the entire file or by sending the station only the missing blocks. So, Let's put that in more easily understood terms. FLAMP explained in simplified terms is 100% file accuracy using FEC or forward error correction. It allows for requesting or sending only missing blocks as opposed to needing to send resend the entire file. And it facilitates the use of digitally signed files for authentication purposes. 100% accuracy may not always be necessary for all radio traffic. For example, if you received an FL message document with errors, and this is what you receive, when the original message the sending station transmitted reads as follows, wildfire on north side of Huckleberry Mountain, winds from the southeast 15 to 20 miles per hour. Even with a garbled message containing several errors, you can still get the meaning of the original message. But sometimes, information must be sent and received with precise accuracy. For example, grid coordinates being relayed to a life flight helicopter mission for a critical condition medevac patient. One digit off could mean miles off, even a hundred miles off on a map. Perhaps, perhaps a doctor's prescription is that 3 or 30 or 300 or 3,000 milligrams of medication? Sometimes message traffic simply has to be 100% accurate. Another reason for the necessity of precise accuracy is authentication. Most official Amron traffic coming from the top down is digitally signed so that station operators in the field know for certain the traffic is authentic and not spoofed. It also protects against malicious or misleading disinformation being misrepresented as Amron traffic. The net control stations know to stop the further spread and to discredit any message traffic that they know is not authentic. To pass the authentication process, digitally signed files require 100% accuracy. We use other authentication practices as well, but this is the most widely distributed. And finally, one great feature of FLAMP is that files are broken down into blocks of information. So if a transmission gets warbly or regional lightning storms disrupt portions of the transmission, the recipients can request just the missing blocks to be resent. And the sending station doesn't have to send the entire message again. Most Amron traffic sent out as wide distribution traffic for example, during scheduled nets to multiple stations simultaneously, will be sent using FL message. 
But if the traffic contains information which must be precisely accurate, or if it is digitally signed, it will also be sent by FLAMP, FLAMP, following the transmission in FL message. So let's get your FLAMP set up for Amron radio operations. First, open FL Digi. FLAMP will only function with FL Digi opened. Then open FLAMP by double clicking on the desktop icon. When prompted to update your call sign info, just click OK. First, click the Configure tab. Some of these features are based on personal preference, but the following are what most Amron operators have set up. As with other videos, I've added a no call or N0CALL in the call sign field for demonstration purposes. This is where licensed ham operators would add their FCC call sign and will be included in the message header when they transmit. This lets you see what station is sending the message because the message may not necessarily be from that sending station. For example, if President Trump asked a ham operator to send a message across the net to and from might show to Amron network from President Trump. That would technically be third party traffic since President Trump isn't a licensed ham. So the transmitting station has to be identified. In the case of the Amron AIB, those are addressed to QST Amron from Amron National but sent through licensed ham operators who preclude the traffic with their FCC call signs. The call sign field is where that is pulled from. Whatever is in the call sign and the info field is what will be transmitted as the sending station. In the case of relaying a received FLAMP file, the station that originally sent the file will appear in that call sign and info field. What to put in the info field? Well, that depends on what you want sent out when you transmit a file, perhaps an identifier such as central NCS, for example, or you can leave it blank. But once again, this video is focused on stations setting up to receive FLAMP traffic. So most of these aren't real critical settings. They're more pertinent to sending stations. Still, the following is recommended. Feel free to pause the video to note the settings in your FLAMP setup. I'm using FLAMP version 2.2.12 for this video. So subsequent versions may have additional features not covered here. At the bottom, the Enable TX RX Interval. This is a personal preference setting. What this does is pauses the transmission every three minutes for 10 seconds. Of course, you can modify these settings the developer's intent is that this feature is used for transmitting data over repeater systems that incorporate a limited or restricted transmit time frame. If you're sending FLAMP over a repeater that has an automatic timeout timer set for three minutes, you may want to set your FLAMP to break transmission every two minutes, 50 seconds, and for long enough for the repeater to reset for the next transmission. Some FLAMP transmissions can take several minutes depending on the mode being used and the size of the file. There's no save button. Whatever settings you choose are automatically saved. Now let's go over to the receive tab. This is where you'll be able to watch files come in as they're being received. On the left is what a compressed file looks like in FL Digi as you're receiving it from someone using FLAMP. On the right is an example of what your FLAMP window might look like when receiving the file. In your FLAMP window, as the header data comes in, you will see it begin filling in the corresponding fields. The output field will show the name of the file being sent out by the sending station. Here you can see it is a .k2s file. The date time field is the time the file began being transmitted not the time the file or the report was created. The bottom pane will list all the files you're receiving or have received since you opened FLAMP. It will indicate the percentage of how much of the file you've received. Then it will indicate who the sending station is and whatever he's placed in the info field. And then the size of the file in bytes and the number of the blocks this file has been broken down into 
The field labeled missing will show exactly which blocks you have still to receive. As you successfully receive each block, that block number will drop off your missing blocks list and the field labeled blocks will begin filling in with blue blocks. If any part of the block is corrupted, it will show that block number in your missing window and a white space in the blocks field will appear corresponding with that missing block number. Now here, I'll speed up the video so you can see the end result of this transmission. Once you receive all of the blocks, it will be confirmed as 100% receive in the bottom pane. You must have all of the blocks, which will give you a 100% receive, or you won't be able to open the file. In this example, you can see that blocks 12, 14, 17, 18, 19, and 29 are missing. Until those blocks are received, the file will not be saved or accessible. When the net control station operator asks for block fill requests, stations who are able to transmit will click their report button. Their FLAMP program will transmit a request for the blocks they're missing. And if you're a receive only station, you'll get the benefit of receiving those block fills too. Not always, but often, you will be missing many or all of the same blocks that other stations are missing. For example, lightning crashes in the region or some, someone accidentally transmitting during the middle of a file transmission may cause many of the other stations to miss the exact same blocks. What if everyone is done sending traffic and getting block fills and you're still missing one or two blocks? Well, one answer is to leave your FL Digi and FLAMP programs open because Amron runs on a persistent presence net. Someone is always on the air. It's very common for someone to pop up out of nowhere an hour or several hours later and ask if there's any net traffic, such as the latest Amron intelligence brief, or they'll just request over the air if anyone could relay the AIB to them. Typically, someone will eventually respond and send the traffic. If the relaying station is using the relay feature in FLAMP, and hopefully they are, and sends the file with the original queue, this is a great way to pick up blocks you might still be missing from the net that took place an hour or more earlier. Quick side note on what a queue is. Each time a station sends a file, FLAMP automatically assigns that file a four character alphanumeric queue identified when he loads the file into FLAMP to be transmitted. In this case, the queue is 8F69. You can also see which file queue is being sent, as indicated in the receive pane of FL Digi. Each block will appear as a hash preceded by that file queue and that block number. As you read through the raw data coming in, you can see Q8F69, block 1, block 2, block 3, and so on. So you've received a file and you're showing 100% receive. Where did it go? Simply go up to the File tab, then click Folders. You'll see the FLAMP directory, which includes an RX and TX folder. Open the RX folder. This is where all the FLAMP traffic you received goes. FLAMP will automatically create a new folder with that day's date, and all the FLAMP traffic you've received that day is saved there. Simply open the file just like you would in FL Message and the form will be displayed in FL Message where you can read it or edit it in your internet browser. You might have to point to FL Message and save that setting so the files always open in FL Message in the future. So now you have a fundamental understanding of how FLAMP works, how to receive FLAMP files, and how to open them. Stand by for a test message at the end of the video. The signal will begin at 900 on the waterfall. So be sure to open FL Digi and then FLAMP after you've gotten it all set up in Contestia 4250, followed by a mode change to MFSK32. Once the file is complete, you should indicate 100% reception in FLAMP with all of the blocks showing blue. If you miss a block, then play that portion of the video again and it should fill. You won't be able to read the contents of the message unless you have both the custom Amron forms installed in the NBEMS folder, 
covered in the last video, and your FLAMP program open. If you found this video helpful, then please like, comment, and share with others, and be sure to subscribe so you won't miss out on future trading videos and other great content. Be watching for the next video, which will cover sending FLAMP files. Lots more to come. Now, get your comms up.